Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome in. Please, as you are coming in, share the live broadcast. Introduce yourself by indicating where you're tuning in from. We're going to get started in a minute. Hallelujah. Glory to the living King of Kings. Glory to the living King of Kings. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Have your way in us, O oh God. Have your way in us, O oh God. Welcome to those of you who are joining in on TikTok. Let's make sure we are joining and sharing. Tap on the screens. Let's make sure we invite more people to come on board. Hallelujah. Glory to your living name. Tonight is an exciting time for us. Those of who you are on TikTok, I'm glad that you are joining us this quickly as well. Amen. Welcome, welcome. It's been quite an awesome time in the Lord that we've been having. Um, yesterday, we had an awesome time as well. I hope that you took some time to go and worship God as well. Hallelujah. In your respective corners of the earth. I'm grateful for you allowing me to be in your living room to join you um, tonight. And I'm grateful to be in your bedroom. Maybe it is in your car, you're at work, wherever you're tuning in from, I'm grateful. Thank you so much. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about pressure, basically focusing what it is that we can get out of pressure. Um, what can you benefit when you are going through a pressureful situation? We're going to go into moments of prayer and we're going to declare into the week. As you know, as always, Monday is Monday blast night where we are blasting what we want to see in the week. Hallelujah. So what the Holy Spirit has laid in my heart is the subject of pressure and how we can capitalize on pressure to bring about the results and the things that we want to see. Amen. When life gets extremely overwhelming and we can only see what uh, we perceive is ahead of us, we can only see probably we are short-sighted. We may even stop praying. We may stop trust, trusting God. But the Bible encourages us through the Apostle Paul when he says he was greatly under pressure, but he really realized that he had been doing things the wrong way and he wanted to turn the situation around. He had been relying on himself and on his own strength and he had been relying on his own wisdom. Hallelujah. Instead of relying on our God. Hallelujah. The one who raises the dead, the one who turns situations around. So like the apostle Paul, we need to turn things around. Amen. So we need to turn things around. We need to understand that whenever we are going through a pressure situation, we don't rely on ourselves. We don't rely on our own strength. Hallelujah. We don't rely on our own wisdom, but instead we turn all our focus on God. That is why he said in, in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8 to 9, he says, we don't want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about the troubles we are experiencing in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure. Hallelujah. So sometimes it is okay to admit that you are under pressure, but you need to understand that the, the, the pressure, although it may go far beyond your, your capacity, the that you are thinking you cannot overcome this uh, and maybe you are thinking I cannot endure this I'm probably going to die the apostle Paul says uh, sometimes we felt like we are going to despair of life life was going to be taken away from us but indeed we felt uh, we had received the sentence of death but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves but we rely on God who raises the dead he says these things that you are going through the pressure moments that you are going through are so that you can realize that you need to rely on God more what is your situation today? I ask you, what is your situation tonight, wherever you are coming from? I know that there is that pressure situation you might be going through. What is putting you under that great pressure where you are feeling like you are being crushed? Take a moment tonight to say, God, I bring all my pressures to you. I bring all that is stressing me to you. Hallelujah. We are taking a moment to come to God in prayer tonight, all of us, to ask for relief from anxiety. We are asking God for relief from the stress that we are going through. We are asking God to be our source of all things. We realize that we cannot do without him. Amen. So our anchor scripture tonight is coming from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8. It says, we are high 
hard pressed on every side yet not crushed we are perplexed but not in despair hallelujah you may feel the crushing child of God from every side you are thinking you are going to get a break you are saying can I just breathe for a little minute hallelujah that but the Bible the Word of God says we are not crushed we cannot be crushed even though we are feeling like we are being in, in a compressor hallelujah we cannot be in despair because there is a word for you tonight hallelujah talk to me somebody so the objectives that I have tonight are very simple hallelujah is that we need to understand the concept of pressure number one we want to understand what is this concept of pressure that comes through in our lives secondly we need to understand what is the product and the outcome of pressure what can you hope to get out of a pressure situation we need to understand what to do in the midst of pressure talk to me somebody you need to understand what to do in the midst of pressure so that you don't despair so that you are not crushed so that you don't you come out a winner on the other side what is pressure let's look at the word pressure pressure is defined as being continuously being under physical force it is a physical force that is exerted on you or against an object or something in contact with if the object comes into contact with something and that thing exerts pressure on that thing secondly pressure says that it is defined as a sense of stressful agency. So you are going through yeah. that sense of stressful agency caused by having too many demands on your time. Maybe there's too many demand on your resources. You, you are only one person, but you feel like you are being pulled in all directions. I know that having worked in a corporate environment, sometimes when you are working, you are supposed to be working in a team, but you feel like your team is not bring, coming to the party. You are being pulled in all directions. And maybe you are a housewife and you are being pulled in all directions. Maybe you are a wife and you are a mother at the same time but at the same time you are in the corporate world and you are working or you're running a business and sometimes you feel like pulling your hair out of your head because you're saying this is too much I want to breathe and the children are begging you for things left right and center and your budget does not agree you are saying the pressure is too much it's too much your husband is giving you challenges your boyfriend is giving you challenges everybody is just running helter-skelter like crazy people and you are saying pastor fortune tonight I'm under pressure and I want to come and lay down at the cross. I am tired. I want to breathe. So pressure is also can, be, or can also be defined as times of stress. The other synonym of pressure is stress. It is a time of crushing. It is a time of weightiness. Things are weighing heavily on you. It is a time when you are feeling an unusual burden. It is a time when you are feeling tension. You are having tension headaches. You are having migraine headaches. They are coming in all sorts of forms. Hallelujah. It is a time when you realize that you are being squeezed. Hallelujah. The olive oil comes out of pressure from the olive uh, 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 tree. Hallelujah. You understand that for, for olive oil to exist, it needs to be squeezed out of an olive. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. The, if, if you look at the palm oil, it needs to come out. It needs to come out of the palm nut. So everything that is of good quality or that of good use, it comes out of a squeezing process. Diamonds come from a consistent pressure on the charcoal. So continuous pressure on the charcoal will exert what? It will produce what? A diamond. So you know that I'm a diamond. You know that I'm precious. You need to understand that there's going to be fire that is sent in your direction. A butterfly comes out of a caterpillar. It is squeezed out of a caterpillar before you see the beauty of a butterfly. The crushing of a rose is what produces that smell, that perfume of a rose until you crush that perfume or, or you crush that rose rather they, you, they cannot be a smell of that perfume the scriptures are, are, are full of examples of people that went through a crushing that went through pressure talk to me somebody we see in the bible the man joseph he was a, under pressure of envy and jealousy Joseph was under the pressure of his brothers Joseph the same Joseph was under pressure from being thrown in a pit Joseph himself had to go through and live in Potiphar's house and he had to face allegations and face the prison from false accusations. But he needed to go through those pressure situations to come out to be the person he was meant to be. Only Joseph. Imagine if you were pressured in all angles with all that. If Esther did not go through the pressure of being a slave girl of, uh, in, in a strange land, out of her being a slave girl in a strange land, she had to be, uh, become the queen and fight for, his, for her people. She had to call a fast and prayer for her people so that her, her, that her nation can be liber, liberated. 
We see in the example of Daniel, hallelujah, a young man, also a slave in a foreign land, but it, he became the most important person, hallelujah, through pressure. Somebody type in the comment section, pressure, profit under pressure, profit under pressure. Talk to me, somebody. So we are in difficult pressure times, child of God. Any single time, nobody is immune to a, a pressure moment. There are no guarantees. You talk to the banks and, and, and nobody seems certain, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Nobody seems certain what the interest rate will be. They're not sure whether they will still afford their houses tomorrow. Hallelujah. Jobs are scarce. You go and study, you, 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 you register, you get your degree, but you're not sure if you're going to secure that job. You've passed through a lot. We've come out of COVID and you survived. There is a reason why you made it on the other side. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for those gifts. Hallelujah. We are in difficult pressure times. And tonight we are bringing all our pressure points, all our pressure issues, and we are bringing it to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. So let's look at what are the dividends of pressure before we get to pray. Number one, oil is produced out of pressure. So that oil that you need is produced out of pressure. You are existing for a reason, Laura. You made it. You made it for a reason. The anointing of God is produced and released in times of pressure. We see in the Bible, when the Bible talks about Samson, it says Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother to arrange the marriage. And they came as far as the vineyards of Timnah. And suddenly a young man, a, a young lion came roaring towards him. A lion came roaring towards Samson. The spirit of the Lord came upon Samson mightily and he tore the lion apart. So child of God, when you are faced with a pressure situation and you can see that the lion is charging for you and it wants to devour you and you are able to tear it apart like Samson, what is happening there? The anointing of God is coming upon you. And I declare and I decree that from tonight into this whole week, you will feel the anointing of God. The anointing of God will come upon you. The oil that you need to fight that situation that you have been battling through, it is coming on you now in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord came mightily. It came mightily, mightily, hallelujah. And he tore the lion apart as one tears apart a young goat and he had nothing at all in his hand, but he did not tell his father and mother, hallelujah. What is this anointing, the oil that will come upon you? David, in the Psalms, the Bible says that he, he, was, he was a man that he was subject to, to, to rejection in his family. And the Bible says in Psalm 27 verse 10, it says, although my father and my mother have abandoned me, yet the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his child. Yet the Lord will not forsake me. So if David in his awesomeness, a man after God's own heart says that even if my mother and father abandon me, I will rise because God is going to take me up. Somebody who has been feeling that rejection, I want you to declare it right now and say, God is taking me up. God is taking me up. I will not be forsaken. Hallelujah. The man who wrote so many songs, he says, though I walk through the valley of death, I will not fear any evil because my Lord is with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, why are you cast down my soul? Hallelujah. Those songs came from a place that David knew the oil was on him. The oil reassured him. He went into a prayer mode. He went and charged and he says, do not be cast down my soul. Hallelujah. Some people, until pressure is exerted, you will not birth out what God wants you to birth out. Talk to me, somebody. God is taking you up, Bridget. God is taking you up. If nobody wants to take you up, God will take you up. Talk to me. Hallelujah. David, David goes on in, in, in the book of 1 Samuel 17. He says, uh, your servant went on to, to, to battle so many things. Hallelujah. While he was tending his father's sheep. Hallelujah. A lion, a bear came and took a lamb. And what did he do? He went for the lion. That's why I said to you on Saturday, I said, we charge for the devil. We, we, we crush him. We proceed without consequence. We tread upon him. We step on him and we move forward. We have the audacity of the oil that is on us when we are under pressure. Because now we suddenly realize that we are able to take up the lion. We are able to take up the bear. Hallelujah. And he says, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from this uncircumcised Philistine. There is no Goliath that is qualified to bring you down because you can bring down a lion and a bear. Those are your credentials. Those are your CVs. Those is, that is what you refer back to. Talk to me, somebody. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Hallelujah. There is something about the oil. Kashota Kadiaba Sonda.
you will profit under this pressure. Those who will take advantage of the season of pressure will see the oil and the anointing like never before. Those who understand that pressure is meant to squeeze out the oil and the anointing will operate at its peak. Talk to me, somebody. I told you, olive oil comes from what? The squeezing of the olive. Hallelujah. Ground nut comes out from what? The squeezing of the ground nut. Hallelujah. Charcoal produces diamonds. Talk to me, somebody. I don't know what perfume you are looking for, but if you are that rose, allow yourself to be crushed so that you you can squeeze out that oil. Number two, what do we profit? Hallelujah. Life is transformed and refined under pressure. Anytime you're going through a pressure moment, your life will be refined under pressure. Your life will be transformed. We saw how Joseph, after all the things that he went to, through, he still came out being a humble man. He still come, came out being a meekest man. Hallelujah. We see Job that, uh, the Bible says, but he knows the ways that I take and he pays attention to it. When he has tried me, I will come forth refined as gold. So Job in his situation, was still saying, God, I will come forth as gold. I will come forth as gold. He understood that there is a refining process. There is a process that you need to go through. There is a waiting room that you need to go through. Talk to me, somebody. The value of your life can be upgraded when you go through a pressure moment. When you pass through pressure, you are being upgraded. Your value, your worth, you begin to understand yourself. Well, have you ever seen yourself being rejected by a man or rejected by a woman and you know that you, you, you had put your hopes in this person? But when you begin to understand who you are and you come out shining forth as gold and that person looks at you and wants to come back and you say ah i don't even know why i was even looking your way oh that spirit of pressure has to flee it's going out so pressure enhances your value. The person who stands on the mirror and says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that I'm worth something. I belong to God. I am God and God loves me the way I am. And God is elevating me. That person has got no room for, 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 for even doubting themselves, for even listening to negative feedback from people. Hallelujah. So pressure enhances your value. Hallelujah. If you understand the times of pressure, you understand that people who cannot be with you in the times of pressure, those are people you eliminate. Those are associations that you know that they cannot reign with you. If you cannot suffer with me, you cannot reign with me. Hallelujah. When I'm broke and you are not there, don't come to me when I'm a millionaire tomorrow. Talk to me, somebody. You want to upgrade you, to upgrade your destiny. You, 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 you squeeze out the best. You profit from your pressure. Whenever pressure is coming your way, you understand that my destiny is being upgraded. Talk to me, somebody. You are coming out as gold. I want you to comment in that comment section and say, I'm coming out as gold. I'm coming out as gold from this situation. Oh, Rabba Oh, Sanda Diabasunda. Number three, how do we profit from pressure? Birth, birthing happens by pressure. Whenever you are going through a pressure moment, you need to understand that you are giving birth to something. When a woman is pregnant and gets to the point where the water breaks, he under she understands that she has to push. She has to make sure that she's, she's squeezed. The dilation has to happen, but at the same time, she needs to be pushing at the same time. Women give birth under pressure. That is why we can hear the cries of our children from a mile away, because we understand what we went through to birth those children. When we go through those contractions, those powerful contractions. So I want to announce to somebody that the pressure you are going through now, it is just a contraction of what you need to birth out because there is comes a time and a season when heaven is, 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 is crying out for you to birth out your purpose. When heaven is, is beckoning you to say, stop aborting, stop miscarrying, stop running away. My calling is sure in your life. Stop running away. Go for the dream that I have put inside of you. That child has to come out. I come as a midwife with, with all the anointing that I can, I, I can process from heaven tonight to come to you, to beg you to push. Oh, shatakadi abasunda. Those powerful contractions on your uterus is heaven telling you it's time to push. It's time to push. You combine that with the, with the dilation, everything that is in you. you. You bring forth, you will bring forth a child. Your business has to be birthed this year. Are you not tired of false positives and false birthing pangs where, where you, don't, you, don't, you don't have a result? We don't, you don't have anything to show. You, you always come in just at the near misses. Oh, shakata kadia basunda. Eh, la ko shakata kadia. 
Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Can a land be born in one day or can a nation be brought forth in a moment? As soon as Zion travailed, they, he brought forth their sons. As soon as, um, as, as, as Zion prevailed, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I needed to just deal with somebody quickly. Hallelujah. As soon as Zion travailed, he brought forth his son. Who has heard such a thing? Another translation says, who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. So we now see that Israel, hallelujah, we see Israel giving birth. Zion gave birth in one day. So your turnaround, yes, you're coming out as gold, Priscilla. Your turnaround can just take one day of you realizing that under this pressure moment, it is my birthing moment. Hallelujah. Genesis 32, verse 24 to 28, we see Jacob wrestling with the angel. Hallelujah. He says, I will not let you go until you bless me. Shalom, Apostle Alice. Hallelujah. I will not let you go until you bless me. You need to come to the point where you understand that when the pressure moment comes, there comes a time when you need to tell God, you need to tell the angel that I am not letting you go. What do we see? There was a profiting from Jacob's travailing. Hallelujah. He was turned around to become Israel. Hallelujah. So there is always an outcome that is positive. It is your birthing moment, Figile. It is your birthing moment. Hallelujah. Somebody type it again. I'm coming out as gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Says your name shall no longer be Jacob, but your name shall be Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. You have struggled with God and you've struggled with men. You have prevailed. You struggled and you prevailed through COVID, child of God. You prevailed through every threat when they said they are taking you out of your house. You prevailed against every threat when they said, if you don't pay the school fees, you will not write the exams. What has made you and come to this point? Whatever it is that the pressure moment you went through, you have prevailed. If you have prevailed, you must win. You must win through this pressure moment. Talk to me, somebody. In the midst of pressure, a day, in one day, a nation was born. Jacob became Israel, hallelujah, in a season of pressure. Make sure you maximize your season of pressure, hallelujah. When you're going through your season of pressure, you multiply your abilities. David was a man with many abilities that had to come forth as a king, as a shepherd, so many things, hallelujah. Pressure will make sure that you, 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 you see yourself juggling so many things. So whenever you're going through continuous and sustained powerful uh, uh, contractions combined with, a, with, with that pushing, you understand that I am giving birth. You have to give birth. Visions are birthed through pressure. People's visions, people's businesses have been born through pressure. You need to understand that this pressure is for a reason. I'm going to maximize it. I'm not going to go through this pressure and be defeated. I'm not going to go through this pressure and just fall apart. Hallelujah. Number four, why am I going through pressure? I'm going through pressure so that content can be revealed. So pressure comes into your life to reveal the content. What is inside of you? When it is revealed, it can be addressed. Some people, when they're going through pressure, you begin to see that they are, they are full of anger. Some people, when they're going through pressure, they say pressure will bring out your true colors. There's nothing like pressure that brings out the true colors of people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like when people say they are drunk and they said certain things because they were drunk. No, they were always meditating on that thing before they decided to take the alcohol. The alcohol was just a, a, a disguise. So when you're going through pressure, adversity will reveal the content. Hallelujah. If you are prospering, that does not bring out who you really are. You never know a person from prosperity, but you know a person from adversity. When things are bad, those who flee, we know who you are. When things are bad, how you react, how your character, how are, are you refined? How are you coming out? So you never know anybody until they go through a season of pressure. You don't judge people by a season of prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you are going through that pressure moment, hallelujah, you don't even know who you are sometimes yourself until you go under pressure. Hallelujah. The stuff that you are made of is revealed when you go under pressure. 
If you want to know what are you made of, it comes out when you're under pressure. Talk to me, somebody. So the stuff that you are made of is revealed by pressure. It is in times of pressure that you really know who you are and what you believe in. Because that is the true test where you are going to choose whether are you still a Christian or not. Oh, What do you really stand for? Because this is the point where people waver, where people now start going and cons uh, uh, consulting soothsayers, where people consult mediums. They, they run away from because uh, now it's God, it's like you're overdue. Oh, Jesus. Jesus says to Peter, you are going to deny me when I'm going to go to be persecuted. And Peter says, assuredly, I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me. This is what Jesus says. He says, Peter, you're going to deny me before this night is over. When the rooster crows, you're going to deny me. And Peter says, even if I have to die with you, I'm going to die with you. You will know who is the, who is the real person who's really going to die with you when you're under pressure. Not small pressure. Wait until the trauma really comes. There are some people who, 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 be, who married some people too quickly before you went through a traumatic situation with a person. You will never know the, 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 the resilience of your spouse until you go through pressure, whether they run or not. Hallelujah. May God give you spouses that are good quality in Jesus' mighty name. He says, Peter says, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And the other disciples said the same thing. But if you go further in the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse, uh, verses um, 69 to 75, you now see Peter. Peter sitting outside the courtyard and a servant maiden comes to, her, to him and says, were you not the one who was with Jesus in Galilee? And you denied him. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't me. Peter is in denial. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. He denied again with an oath. He says, I don't know that man. Who is Jesus? He says, and a little later, he stood by and came up and said to Peter, surely you are also one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then Peter begins to hear the cock crow, and he remembers what Jesus said. He says, oh my God, I am, I'm, 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 I'm a sinful man. Hallelujah. So who has said to you, I will die with you? And when pressure arises, will they fail like Peter? You will note, you will note the level of faith that you have when you're going through pressure. Hallelujah. You will know the level of audacity that you have when you're going through pressure. You will know that your content will be revealed when you go through pressure and you can address those things that are shortcoming. Maybe you are still fearful. Hallelujah. Maybe you are unbelieving. Maybe you, you, you need to work on yourself more. God will show you those things that he needs to work on on you. Number five, character is refined by pressure. Your character will be refined by pressure. Let me speed up so that we can go into prayer now. Luke 15 verses 17 to 19 says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, father, I've sinned against you in heaven and, and, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. This is the prodigal son. He comes to his senses. His character had to be refined. He thought he had, he just needed money and he just needed to be out there. So his mentality was corrected. His character was refined. His character needed adjustment. And we see him being humbled from poverty because he realizes that I left my father's house where I had enough provision and I went to thinking that I'm so cool, I'm going out with my friends and I'm going to squander money outside. Hallelujah. But your character will be refined. You will be humbled. Hallelujah. So what do you do in times of pressure very quickly? What, when you go through pressure times, number one, you need to pray. That is when your prayer life is strengthened even more. Pressure times are times of prayer. We saw it in the example of Jacob because Jacob went into a prayer mode. He said, if anything happens, I am not shifting here until my blessing comes. Hallelujah. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. His destiny was fulfilled. Hallelujah. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him lest he come and attacks me and the mother with their children. Hallelujah. He feared his brother Esau. So when you go through pressure and you go into your prayer mode, you deal with fear. Fear goes away the more you pray, the more you confess, the more you declare the word. You well up inside of you. Hallelujah. With prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Daniel chapter 3 says that is if that is the case of our God verses 17 to 19 if that is the case our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand O king you begin to have boldness through your prayer life. Your prayer life exerts boldness to say, listen, my God can deliver me from the fiery furnace. You can do your worst, said Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whenever you are confronted with pressure, it is not a death sentence. Daniel was confronted with a death sentence, but he chose God. He chose God. You maximize your prayer life. Your prayer life is your response to pressure moments. When you're going through pressure times, you maximize your response. By what? By praying. Hallelujah. You maximize your prayer response by declaring over your children where you can see that there is an enemy in the midst. You maximize your response when you can see that there are altars that are fighting your children. There are altars that are fighting you. There are altars that are coming from ancestral worship of some sort. You need to get your children delivered. Your response needs to be prayer. Hallelujah. When under pressure, Esther had to deliver her people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gathered all, she gathered all the Jews, hallelujah, and put them on a fast. You cannot go on eating, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't go on eating when your destiny is under threat. You are under pressure and you are still eating. You can fast and pray, hallelujah. And the Bible says in, in the book of Thessalonians that we should pray without ceasing. Pray as if the same way you are breathing, you pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication of all the saints. Job still had time to pray for his friends while he was going through what he was going through. Job 42.10. Hallelujah. So every threat of the enemy is to be given maximum prayer response. Number two, what do you do in times of pressure? Pressure times are thinking and planning times. You need to re-strategize. You need to think. You need to plan. The prodigal son had to revisit his thinking because his thinking was thinking. He, he left his father's house to go become a beggar. He needed to readjust his thinking. Hallelujah. That's what the prodigal son did. You need to adjust your thinking, readjust your thinking, plan afresh, go and re-strategize, count the cost before you start building, hallelujah. Adversity will impart a mentality that is correct. It is the time when God uses that pressure moment to say, let me allow this adversity so that your mentality can be corrected. Hallelujah. So that you don't settle down and be regretful. Talk to me, somebody. Number three, what do you do in pressure times? In pressure times, this is the time you give God praise. Praise times, you praise him like you're going crazy so to, to the extent that the devil does not understand what you're doing. Hallelujah. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. You pray and you sing. You pray and you sing because the devil is confused. Why are you still being joyful at that moment? And he begins to see that the earth starts to quake. The, 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 the prison doors begin to open and they burst open. Talk to me, somebody. Jonah, he says, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Somebody needs to be vomited out. When you praise God, you will be vomited out of any entrapment, any situation. I don't know what fish has swallowed you. I don't know what fish has made you keep quiet, but you need to be swallowed out. Salvation is of the Lord. Oh, somebody say I'm profiting under pressure. This is not a murmuring moment. This is not a complaining moment. This is not a time to grumble. When you're going through pressure, it is not time to grumble. It's not a time to murmur. Come on, somebody. It is the time to thank God for your life and say, God, thank you, Lord, that I'm alive. I'm thanking you that I'm breathing. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my sustenance. Thank you, God. I may have wanted the Range Rover, but I'm just grateful for life. Can I just pause this one, one moment and just thank you for life? Thank you, the Lord, that I'm alive. I've been grumbling. Some people lost their lives. Some people buried their parents. They lost their parents through COVID. And I'm here. Thank you, Lord, that I'm alive. Thank you, Lord, that I've got children. Hallelujah. So we don't grumble. We don't complain. Thank you because, God, you are faithful. You are a faithful God. The fact that you woke up and you're still listening to me today is because he's a faithful God. Number four, what do you do when you're under pressure? Pressure times are times to persist. Persistence. You need to persist under pressure. We don't give up. Pressure times are times when you refuse to give up. It is time when you are refusing to give in. You say, I will not give up. I will not give way. I will not give in. Hallelujah. And I will not give out. 
that breath is not coming out until you decide that that breath is coming out. You are the one who will decide whether you continue breathing or not. Don't let the doctor dictate to you whether or not they are taking away the, the oxygen machine. No, no, no. You are breathing. I'm not giving out. Oh, shakarabaya. It's not a time to cower. It's not a time to whimper out. Hallelujah. It is the time for you to say to that sickness. It is the time to say to that poverty, you are going out. I am not timing out. It is not time out for me. I am not tired. I'm continuing. I will see the end of you. You will not see the end of me. Pressure, you will not see the end of me. I will see the end of you. Poverty, I will see the end of you. Hallelujah. Job says, if a man dies, shall he live again all the days of my life? I, I will serve the Lord. I will wait on the Lord until my change comes. I am not shifting until my change comes. Do I have any believers who are saying, I will not shift until my change comes? Somebody say, I will not shift until my change comes. From the days of John the Baptist, the Bible says that the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence take it by force. Somebody needs to come violently tonight. I want you to step forth with your violence. You shall come out with violence tonight. As we step into this week, we are dealing forcefully with pressure. We are dealing forcefully with pressure. Oh, somebody is giving birth. Stay in the process. It's not time to time out. Stay in the process. Oh, shakalabakaya. It's not time to break. It's not time to fall apart. Gold is not refined halfway. It has to go through the whole entire processing. Talk to me, somebody. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of God may be of, and the power may be of God and not of us, so that the excellency may be of God, so that the excellency and the power may be seen that God is a powerful God. Hallelujah. We are hard pressed on every side. We are troubled, yet we are not crushed. We are perplexed. Hallelujah. But not in despair. We are not confused to the point of desperation. We are persecuted and not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Oh, Shakati Abasunda. Pastor Lynette, you will not shift until your end comes. Hallelujah. That thing will end before it ends you. Hallelujah. The, 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 the TLB version says, but this precious treasure, this light, this power and power, this light and power that now shines within us, the word of God that is shining inside of you is held in a pair in a a perishable container that is in our weak bodies, but there is a light. It's unperishable, but it is in a perishable body. Hallelujah. In our weak bodies, everyone can see that the glorious power within us must be from God and is not our own. Because you know that by all standards, by men's standards, it is impossible. But he says, I am here. We are pressed on every side by troubles. Troubles come, hallelujah. But we are not crushed and we are not broken, hallelujah. We are perplexed because we don't know why things happen as the way they do. And we don't give up. We don't quit. We don't know why things are happening the way they're happening, but we are not quitting. We are not giving up. That's all we know. But we get up again and we keep going. Oh, Shando Dabaya. I like the TLB version. It says, we get up and we keep on going. You get up and you keep on going. Oh, Rabbi Shikano. Good evening, Prophet. Hallelujah. Welcome, Prophet Garrison. We don't know why we are going through what we are going through. We don't even need the memo on it. But all we know is that we get up and we keep on going. We are hunted down, but God never abandons us. You know that when the devil comes from you, he says, the Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to see your destruction, so he keeps on coming. He keeps on putting the pressure, and you think that you conquered one demon last week, and you think there's another. There's 16 more that have, are coming through. Hallelujah. But God never abandons you. We get knocked down, but we get up again and we keep going. These bodies of ours are constantly facing death, just as Jesus did. So it is clear to all of us that he is the only living Christ who can keep us safe. It's only the living Christ that can keep us safe. Oh, shakadabaya. It is only God that can keep us safe. Hallelujah. The Message Bible says this. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm coming to the end of it. I'm, I'm on 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 12. 
He says, we've been surrounded and we have been battered by troubles, but we are not demoralized. We are not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. What they did to Jesus, they also did to us. They put us through trial. They put us through torture. He lives. That is the one thing we know, that he lives through the torture and he lives through the trials. We are living through the trials and we are living through the torture. They put us through mockery. They put us through murder. What Jesus did amongst them, he does in us. He lives. Jesus chose to live so we choose to live we do what jesus did our lives are in constant risk for jesus sake which makes jesus's life all the more evident in us while we are going through the worst you are getting on on the best ah amy pause ah yvette while you are going through your worst jesus says you are going through your best you are going into your best your worst situation your pressure situation is producing the best Ah, so what do we do? Ensure that in this season, child of God, if you're going through a pressure situation, you ensure that in this season of pressure, you pray. You ensure that you plan. You ensure that you rethink and you praise and you persist. You pray, you plan, you praise and you persist. You pray, you praise, you plan and you persist. Hallelujah. You ensure that you come out of this season a different way. You must make up your mind tonight. I am not coming out the same way I came in. When we started this broadcast, by the end of this broadcast, you determine in your spirit that I'm coming out being a different person. Job, Job came out with double a double anointing, double prosperity. Hallelujah. You also will come out with your double blessings. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord had blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Your latter days will be better than your beginning. Hallelujah. Everything in Job's life became blessed. Daniel came out into a different realm of prosperity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for these ones that have joined tonight, oh God. Father, we come to you. Heavenly Father, we praise your name today. You are awesome, God. We declare and decree that you are awesome. We come before you tonight, Lord, to seek solace, to seek solace from the pressure that we have been feeling in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare confidently that with men it is impossible, but with God it is possible. We declare that it is possible with you, O God. As life is happening, Lord, we feel consumed at times, O God. About everything that is going around us, we feel like we are suffocating. We are consumed. We are feeling consumed in our family, in our lives, in our businesses, in our career. We are feeling like we are consumed. Hallelujah. So tonight, oh God, we have come to call upon you because we are feeling the stress at, at times, oh God, that you are going to empower us and equip us that we do not fall apart in Jesus' mighty name. We call upon you, oh God. When we are feeling worn down, that person who is feeling worn down, this is your season, this is your moment. Hallelujah. God, we declare and decree that you are our refuge and you are our strength. You are our ever-present help in times of need, oh God. Father, we are tired. Somebody is saying that. He's saying they are tired. They don't know whether they can go on. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we bring our tiredness to you. Father, we need your living waters for a refreshing tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope you are speaking in tongues. Be praying along with me. Hallelujah. We need your, your, your living waters to quench our thirst every single day as we go into this week, oh God. Relieve every mounting pressure. Everybody who is listening to the sound of my voice, those who will watch the repeat of this program on YouTube and on Facebook, oh God. We're leaving it all at your feet tonight, oh God. We don't want to carry it. We don't have the capacity to carry this weight. So we are offloading tonight. We are putting it at your feet, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Father, we, we are not coming out of this season the same way we went in. Whoever started at that pressure moment, whoever, whatever you have been feeling, you are not coming out the same. You will be different on the other side. Hallelujah. Receive the grace to come out in a different way. Receive the grace to come out victoriously. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are giving us the grace to pray in this season of pressure. In the name of Jesus, we will pray like never before. We will praise like never before in the name of Jesus. We receive the grace and to pray, you, to pray and to praise you like never before.
We receive the grace to think and plan and re-strategize, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We receive the garment of praise and we reject the spirit of heaviness in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody declare with me, we are rejecting the spirit of heaviness. We are receiving, we are receiving the garment of praise tonight. Lord, we receive the grace to persist. We receive the grace to persist, oh God, to move on until we step out on the other side, until we step into a higher level of victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In all things, Lord, we declare that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. In Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> Somebody type in that comment section, I'm coming out as gold. I'm coming out as gold. Father, we thank you. I declare supernatural supplies to that one who has been going through pressure moments where they don't know whether, where their provision will come from. I declare and I decree supernatural supplies and provision and resources are coming your way to enable you not to give up in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I declare and decree that anyone who has been wondering, Lord, whether you are there or not. Father God, may they find comfort and, 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 and rejuvenation to know that you are a God that never abandons his children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare immediate, instant, and urgent solutions are coming to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God is going to visit you and give you urgent solutions. Hallelujah. Everything that is putting you under pressure, you are coming out as gold. Fresh help is coming your way. Mercy is coming your way. Grace is being released upon you. In this week, you will succeed. In this week, you will conquer pressure. We curse the fear demon. We curse the demon of temptation. We curse the demon of panic. You will not be subject to anxiety attacks and panic. We seize and we, we, we crush anxiety. We crush fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that help has been released from heaven tonight. Receive the help from heaven tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare and we decree that we are coming out out of every attack of stress, oh God, in our body, in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare strength to our bodies. That person who is believing God for, for healing in their body, they are sick. Hallelujah. I want you to declare this and decree it with me. Every attack that has been on your body, putting you under pressure physically, whatever condition it is, we declare strength over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare strength over every immune system that has been weakened right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This week shall be a stress week, free, free stress week for you. This week shall be a stress-free week for you. You are a child of the living God. I want you to declare it with me. Type it in the comment section that I am stress-free. I am stress-free. I live stress-free. Whichever way you want to capture it, this week you are stress-free. This year is a stress-free year. This month is a stress-free year. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. This week, every single day, from today, Monday to, through to Sunday, it shall be a stress-free day. Hallelujah. You will rise with strength. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rabbi Sunda. You have not been given a spirit of fear, but you have been given a, sp a spirit of sound mind and love. Hallelujah. Stress, can stress cannot overcome your mind. You have a sound mind. Stress will not overcome your mind. Hallelujah. You may be pressed on every side, but you will not be crushed. Hallelujah. You will cope well. Hallelujah. Whether you are under pressure, you will cope well in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Shakoda by Asunda. Every pressure point, you will not be buckled down. You will rise above that pressure moment with strength and power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You may be pressed on every side, but you will not be crushed. I want you to declare it right now with me. I will not be crushed. I will not be crushed. I will not be crushed. Hallelujah. You may be perplexed, but you will not be in despair in Jesus' mighty name. You are not forsaken. You are not struck down. You will not be destroyed. Even though you may feel struck down, you will not be destroyed. You are coming out stress-free. You are coming out pressure-free. Hallelujah. Your mind is intact. You are not going to lose your mind. You are not going to go into depression. You are not taking any psychotic pills. You are coming out stress-free in Jesus' mighty name. That pressure situation, I speak to it right now. It is going to help you to bear out the fruit of perseverance inside of you. What the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it around. You are going to come out with fruits of perseverance on a new level in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I declare that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will come over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding is upon you right now in Jesus' mighty name. 
Receive the peace of God, YouTube. Receive the peace of God, Facebook. TikTok, receive the peace of God. You are coming out as gold. You are coming out as gold. You will profit from your pressure in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. With, will you shout an amen? Will you shout a believing amen and agree with me before I close the service? Hallelujah. Shout that believing amen. Somebody make that amen thunder. Hallelujah. If you believe with every declaration, every prayer we have prayed tonight, I want you to shout a believing amen. Thunder that amen loud. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you for these ones, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Hallelujah. Every single person that has been on this broadcast. Hallelujah. Go into the week. You are blessed. Go and conquer in Jesus' mighty name. Go out and conquer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. We meet tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Hallelujah. 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Thank you so much. God bless.